Yo, what's up everyone? Kevin here. Welcome to the Snowboard Pro Camp live chat. Uh, so today is a special live chat because it's Black Friday. I know a lot of people out there are shopping for their uh, snowboard gear to uh, complete their snowboard gear list for the upcoming season and uh, yeah a lot of big uh, decisions going down so I thought I would come on here just as a bonus kind of like live chat and just talk to you guys about snowboard gear if you guys have any questions about uh, your upcoming gear purchases definitely hit me up and yeah stoked to be on here to chat with you guys for the next hour or so and yeah, for myself too, I've been, I've, I've pretty much got all my snowboard gear all, all set, but today I've actually been doing some Black Friday shopping for some other things to do with like camera equipment and stuff for the channel. So that's what I've been doing. And um, yeah, yesterday was opening day here in Whistler. So I had a great time up snowboarding yesterday with TJ, Chris and Tim. And I uh, hope you guys are getting some good opening days or if you haven't, uh, been up the mountain yet. I hope you guys get up the mountain soon because yeah, winter is just uh, kicking off. So um, also guys, I've put, uh, I was looking at like some different Black Friday deals and I found my 10, what I think are the 10 best ones out there. I've put a link below in the description to my top 10 uh, Black Friday deals. I was just trying to find some of the best deals I could out there. And uh, yeah, these are a lot of the stuff is, is stuff that I own, so if, uh, if I didn't already have it, I'd probably be buying it myself. And I, I know some stuff is on the list like uh, outerwear that is Gore-Tex and also some like Oakley goggles and, and things like that and some cool accessories that I think you definitely need for snowboarding as well. So let's get into it and see who's on here and see who's asking questions. And yeah, really stoked to uh, talk to you guys for the next hour or so and just answer as many of your Black Friday snowboard questions as I can. All right, let's get into it. Uh, here's a few shout outs to start off with some of the people tuning in. We got El Stacker on here, Saul Goodman. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Matt Kramer saying hit the like button. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And uh, NGen's on here as well. Daniel, Gemma Spencer. We got Lucas on here, Rodney. Uh, Ronnie saying happy Black Friday. I guess it's kind of like a weird thing. It's like a it's like a shopping holiday, but it's definitely a good good time to uh, to complete your snowboard gear list. All right, El Stacker says smash the like button. Thanks, man. All right. Um, yep, Miles. Thanks for tuning in, Pavel. Appreciate it, guys. Care says two days in a row. Uh, yeah, how to do it. Yesterday was kind of like the Whistler opening day live chat. And because the Whistler opening is just followed right by the Black Friday, how to come on here and talk to you guys and answer any of your questions. Um, we got S. Van Lith watching from Holland. And uh, yeah, tons of people on here. Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Zach from Toronto, Dial59 from Ottawa. We got, we got 100 miles per hour films watching from Scotland. Awesome guys. Let's see who's got the first gear question. All right, so the first gear question from Jonathan Kim, and it's also a super chat. Thanks Jonathan for the support. It says, thoughts on Burton Kilroy Twin 2020 as a beginner park board. Thinking of uh, this or Kilroy 3D, Capita DOA. Also, will EST cartel bindings be good? I'm five foot five, 130 pounds, size eight men's boots. Learn, leaning more towards twin 148. <clears throat> um, you know what? The Burton Kilroy twin is, uh, it's like a decent beginner park board. Um, recently, I included it in one of my package videos uh, because yeah, it was like a cool a cool board to fit into a package. It's kind of like a beginner intermediate, but there's definitely some other beginner type park boards out there as well. I would say the other ones you have on there, Capita DOA and also the Kilroy 3D are probably too stiff to be beginner to intermediate park boards. Um, and the, Bill, uh, the Burton Kilroy Twin is kind of like, it's on the border, it's like, it can be beginner or it's or it can also be intermediate advanced if i was if i was recommending um also the cartel bindings i think are even a little bit stiff for a beginner park board so what i would go i would check out 
check out some softer, I would go even softer if, if you're looking for that beginner park board. So maybe something like the, uh, uh, there's lots out there. So the, the GNU Money, for example, uh, even the GNU, uh, the new one out there, the GNU Finest. Uh, so the GNU Finest and the GNU Money, the cool thing with those is that they've got pretty like, um, it's like the uh, rocker camber combination and that rocker really helps it be very forgiving towards the, the tips of the board. Um, also something like the like a LibTech uh, box, the LibTech box scratcher, I think that'd be a good beginner board as well. And then in terms of bindings, I would look at something that, that, is very, uh, that is very soft. So if you want to stick with Burton, I think the Burton Malavitas are probably uh, softer than the cartels. Um, I think also the Burton Mission bindings are probably softer. Uh, but then if you want to check out some other brands, so the what I have on the headspace here, they're called uh, Bent Metal Transfer Bindings. They're, they're pretty flexible, soft, park park binding, um, or you can also get something like the Union Contact Pros, which are another soft park binding. So maybe check out a few of those. Also, <laughs> I don't want to throw too much out at you, but the Capita, Capita Horoscope is like a good soft park board. So you're talking about the Capita DOA, I think it's too stiff. Look at something much stiffer, like or much softer. Um, Capita Horoscope, it's got like the camber to rocker zones, and that just makes it very forgiving. So, yeah, I hope that helps you out, Jonathan. Um, great question, man. Uh, Lewis Burns wants to know where is Kevin? So I'm in I'm in Whistler in my house in my house in Whistler. Um, awesome. So tons of great questions, guys. We got Kim on here, Rodney Black, Seth White. All right. Tons of people on here. Uh, Rodney Black wants to know any Volcom or 686 gear. Um, I haven't found many uh, Volcom or 686 gear deals. I did on uh, Evo.com, I did find one pair of Volcom stretch Gore-Tex pants that were like a good deal. So. If you're looking for stretch Gore-Tex pants, or sorry, not stretch Gore-Tex, just, just Gore-Tex. If you're looking for Gore-Tex pants, um, there's definitely at least one model of pants on Evo that were, that were on a Black Friday sale. All right. Uh, Keenan Beers says, do you recommend Shell? coats or insulated coats um, I actually recommend like for me here in Whistler it's uh, it does get cold but the most important thing is is having a jacket that's waterproof so I really like having a shell because with a shell it's typically a bit more waterproof and then you can just layer underneath so for me I think I think a shell is the way to go because then you can just start making those doing the layers as you need having like um, one or two or three layers underneath your jacket and then when it comes time for like spring and warmer park riding days, you can just uh, wear the same jacket with less layers underneath and you'll be good. So I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of, of the shell type jackets and then just layering as you need to. <clears throat> and Bongani uh, with the question, any suggestions for a reasonable, reasonable priced True Twin camber board? Um, yeah, so um, camber dominant board, I would say, yeah, like something like the Capita Horoscope, that's uh, very reasonably priced, pretty, pretty low price point there. All right, and somebody says, hi, Black Friday just got done here in Denmark, and I got a new jacket and pants, and some books for uni. Okay, good job. All right. All right, so Riley V says, what size? So 10 and a half boot fit on a 155 regular board or would I need a wide board? Um, 10 and a half is kind of like on the borderline, but you should be okay. Um, I've always ridden size 10 boots and I've been, I've been fine on regular width boards. I think it's once you get to 11, that's when you're kind of like, you're getting, it's getting a bit tricky and you probably need to go for a wide board. But I'd say 10 and a half 
you're, you should be good with regular. Uh, and no, no, no says, have you ridden the 2020 GNU Mueller? If yes, how does it compare to the Orca? Um, I have not ridden the Mueller, but uh, I'll have to check it out. It looks like a really fun board. I think it's uh, it's it's not really comparable to the the Orca. I think the Mueller is a bit it's a bit more of that traditional um, size board. So the 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 Orca is volume shifted, so it's a bit shorter and fatter. Where I think the Mueller is a little bit more like all mountain and resort friendly. So the uh, yeah a bit different there. I think the Orca is more more powder friendly. The Mule Air is probably a bit more versatile. Um, the Orca is probably going to make tighter turns for like things like tree riding, where the Mule Air is probably better for like uh, uh, drawing out lo long carves and like riding down like big pitches. So a little bit of difference there. They they have a lot of similarities too. Both have the main attraction, but yeah, the Mule Air looks fun. Uh, the pro rider too, Nicholas Mueller. He's uh, one of one of my favorites. He's he's a legend. We got George watching from Vancouver. What's up, man? Hayden from New Zealand. We got Logan on here. What's up, man? Uh, Engine says, uh, "What happened with your blue orca?" Um, yeah, I still have it. Uh, where is it? It's somewhere. It's 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 in the other room, man. I still have the blue one. Um, I think this winter. So this is the the newest one. NGen knows, but for everyone out there, this is the 2020 Orca, and I also have the 2019 Orca, which is blue, and uh, they're different sizes. So this one's a 159, the other one's a 153, and I definitely wanted to get something bigger for like charging at higher speeds and hitting bigger things. But uh, yeah, the blue one I think I'll lend to TJ, and he can he can ride the the last year's model. So yeah, it should be fun. Me and TJ will get have a couple Orcas out this year. All right, Lucas says, Kevin, greetings from Slovakia. Our main resort should be opening tomorrow, but we have like two inches of snow on the peak. Uh, enjoy, see, uh, uh, enjoy the season, stay healthy and, and stoked. Kwapla, nice man. Yeah, you too, Lucas, man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, and Jules is watching from Canada as well. Kim is watching from the Netherlands. Um, Rodney says that he picked up the super DOA. Awesome. Thanks for the review. Yeah. Enjoy it, man. Yeah. That was TJ's review over on board archive. That's, that's awesome. Um, Jack says thoughts on the ride war pig. Um, yeah, the ride war pig is a pretty versatile, bo versatile board. You can take it into the, into the park. You can ride it on the groomers and it's also directional with a taper. So you can take it into powder. So it's a very, uh, versatile board so can definitely handle a lot of different conditions I would say though if you're look if you're looking for a board that's more tuned to riding the whole mountain get the war pig if you want a board that's more tuned to riding in the park maybe check out something like the twin pig and Jake says crab grab versus Solomon arms versus Gore-Tex mitts Awesome, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So yeah, these are my mitts up here. They're the crab grabs. You also have the, the salmon arms um, and then Gore-Tex mitts just in general. I would say like probably the Gore-Tex mitts are the best, um, but there's other things to consider. You also want to consider like the feel and fit and if you're doing over the sleeve or under the sleeve type mitts. So the crab grabs, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but they've kind of got that like black material coming at the bottom. And that's really designed so that the mitt can go underneath the sleeve of my jacket, which I love. A lot of the salmon arms mitts, they have that like kind of big, um, like uh, the material is designed to go over top of the sleeve of your jacket, which uh, I don't really ride uh, with mitts like that. I just don't find it as comfortable. Um, and then Gore-Tex is great, but then for me, like the reason I went with the, with the crab grab is because of the fit, the feel, they just like fit my hands perfectly. And I tried on some Gore-Tex mitts and unfortunately they just didn't fit properly. So they weren't big enough, uh, for, for whatever reason, like I don't really have the, the biggest hands, but even XL and some of the Gore-Tex mitts I tried on didn't fit. So Gore-Tex will be the most waterproof. Um, and then the other things you gotta decide are like crab, like styles, what style do you like? 
And then also, do you want it to go under or over the sleeve of your jacket? Um, El Stacker says the audio today is much better than yesterday. Awesome, man. Yeah, I got the uh, I got the microphone set up today. Yesterday, we didn't have the mic because I was had my phone plugged in. So yeah, thanks for the input on that. Um, Carl says, any input on the Union Contact Scott Stevens Pro model? Uh, no adjustable high back and not sure how I feel about it. Um, yeah, if, uh, if there's no adjustable high back and that's the game changer for you, there's lots of different uh, bindings in the Union line you can check out. But if you want a soft uh, park binding, it's a, it's a great choice. So yeah, it's kind of... That's if that's the deal, deal breaker for you. If you don't adjust your high back a lot, um, don't worry about it. But yeah, that's a that could be a deal breaker. Maybe maybe check out the other bindings that have the adjustable high back. Maybe check those out. But uh, yeah, very soft park binding. Um, got the mini discs so that your board flexes a bit more natural. So. Yeah, you can get very, there's all, there's so many union models that you can definitely change it up. But yeah, good, good question, Carl. All right. And Tristan says, hey, Kevin, on my way home from buying a Solomon board, Burton custom bindings and some Solomon boots on, Bra on a Black Friday deal. Awesome, man. Yeah, good, uh, good score. And Constantine says, got the LibTech T-Rice Pro gold member for my dad as a gift today. Wow. Hyped to ride with him again. Wow, you're a, you're a, good, you're a good son. That's a really good gift. That's awesome, man. Um, Rodney says, any comparable Volcom or 686 jacket and pants like the Burton stuff you have in the Lynx? Um... So yeah, in the links, I think I've linked a pair of, uh, so I, I found some Volcom, uh, or sorry, sorry, uh, in the links below my top 10 Black Friday deals, I listed a pair of Dekine bibs that, that are Gore-Tex. And so a comparable Volcom bib would be the Volcom Rain bib. So maybe check those out. And then also, so uh, a jacket comparison, to, so I've also linked below the Burton AK jacket and pants, which are like really, really nice. They're Gore-Tex. For me, like I'm, I'm like, I'm almost 6'4", so I'm like very like tall and skinny. So the, the Volcom stuff doesn't fit me because it's not that super long length that I need. But uh, a Burton jacket that would maybe compare is, yeah, something like, let me think like the Volcom Stretch Gore-Tex jacket. You could, you could check that out. Um, that's, the, that's the jacket that TJ was wearing last season. So uh, yeah, maybe check out some of the Volcom Stretch Gore-Tex jackets there. All right, yeah, tons of great questions. Uh, the kid is all right, says, is Burton's step-on system good for beginners? Um, it could be, it could be like, I feel like it is good as a beginner to learn how to put your bindings on uh, standing up. So like when you first start out, you're sitting down, strapping your bindings on, but then once you start to get comfortable and you get your balance, you can start to strap your bindings on while standing, which I think is, which I think is a really good thing to be able to know how to do. Um, but if you want that convenience, if you ride somewhere where you're getting like tons of laps on the chair, like short laps, I think the, the step-ons could be a really good um, uh, thing to, to pick up. But I think it depends on too, like the performance wise, I don't think that the Burton step-ons are for somebody that really wants to like, if you're looking to really get into like park and like learning tricks and um, riding at a high level, I don't know if the Burton step-ons is the, uh, the best first setup to get. You, you're probably better off just with the, the regular straps. But uh, yeah, if you're thinking you just want to get into snowboarding and take it easy and, and chill and kind of just enjoy it, then the step-ons could be a, a good call for you. 
<clears throat> Misfits Snowboarding says, Kevin, you have taught me to snowboard, just turned 45, and this is our second season. Just bought the Burton Process Flying V 2019 and the Ride Twin Pig on TJ's advice. Awesome. And booked uh, Teens for December. That's Teens France. Wow. Awesome. That's amazing. Great to hear. Um, stoked that TJ and I could help you kind of on your snowboard journey there. Have a, have a fun winter. All right. So Chain Davis says, what is a good wax iron? Um, so a good waxing iron, to be honest, I've only had one. So this is my waxing iron there. It's a, it's a Burton waxing iron and I've had it for over 10 years. Um, it was one of the, yeah, one of my top 10 Black Friday deals that I've got linked below in the description is actually a Dekine waxing iron and like tool kit. And, uh, I, I'm sure like I've never tried the Dekine waxing iron, but an iron is not really that, um, there's not really that um, fancy. So I think all, if you have one iron, they're kind of like all the same. So I think whether you get Dekine or Burton or any other one, they're all going to be pretty much the same in terms of waxing iron. But it is, it is really nice to own your own waxing iron because you can just at home, just throw in some wax if you need to. I know that uh, my, my board here, the Orca, actually both boards need some wax, so I'll probably do that tonight or tomorrow morning, throw some wax on there. So it's a, it's a nice thing to have for sure. Uh, so Scream91 says, is there snowboard boots on sale? Uh, there, there is, yeah. So another one, I think it's in my top 10 in the description, is uh, I found some 32 uh, lashed boots. And the 32 lashed are like, I would say they're, they're a fairly soft um, park slash beginner intermediate type boot. And uh, I've wrote, ridden the last, like uh, uh, I've had two different pairs and I found them very comfortable, uh, very simple. They've got the traditional laces and uh, just overall, they're, they're also just in general a lower price. So then putting them on sale on top of that makes them pretty affordable. So yeah, I'd recommend checking out the, the 32 Lashed. Um, if you don't feel like fully committing to buying them online straight away, you can also uh, you know buy them in a store where you can try them on. But uh, yeah, in my experience, they've, they're comfortable, they're soft, they're kind of like a good beginner intermediate softer boot. All right, um, and White House uh, says, what balaclava or face mask would you recommend? Uh, Burton Burke or something other? Um, yeah, I would recommend something other. So I've been wearing black strap face masks for the last five, f three or four years actually. Yeah, maybe, maybe four years. But uh, yeah, it's in uh, my top 10 list below in the description. There is a... Uh, blackstrap balaclava and I think that blackstrap for whatever reason they just make it they make them very comfortable really simple uh, between your head and your face there's like a, a hinge in the material so it's not like too tight around your face you can kind of like very easily slide it up and down so I feel like it's a very like just uh, comfortable like just works well and inexpensive balaclava and they have like tons and tons of cool styles to choose from so I've been wrecking recommending Blackstrap for for years definitely check them out uh, we got Johnny Snipes on here what's up man um, uh, Zachary says thoughts on riding powder in Japan Hakuba without a powder board I ride the battalion fun kink <clears throat> Um, yeah, I would definitely get a powder board if you can. It's just gonna like elevate your experience because in Japan, if you have like a big powder day, you're not gonna really, you're gonna enjoy it obviously no matter what, but it's just gonna make it, everything will be so much easier with a powder board for sure. Um, even in like find a used powder board if you can, if you can or, or do it like get a new one, get a used one, just somehow borrow one from a friend, just, any way you can get a powder board. Um, I'm sure you could find one online for cheap or um, I couldn't find any to be honest on the Black Friday de uh, Black Friday deals, but maybe if you like look around a little bit more on different websites, maybe you could find something Black Friday powder board, but yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely worth it. 
All right. Uh, Tristan, yeah, I saw your poem today on the, uh, the Western Opening Day video. Good one, man. White Tiger says, hi, Kevin, just bought my new setup. Evil Twin, nice. Uh, Union Contact Pro, good ch and good choice. Yeah, good choice, man. That looks like a, a fun park butter setup. Should be good, man, good choice. Uh, Zach Green says, is it possible to pull the ear covers out of the sandbox helmet you have linked? Uh, yeah, it is. So I pull, that's the first thing I do is I pull the ear covers out and they come out pretty easily. And then I also kind of customize, they come with like extra padding um, in the helmet. So it's not like the padding that protects your head, but just like the kind of the padding that gets you like a snug fit. And you can also adjust that as well. So I really try to get it, the helmet adjusted how, how I like uh, after opening it. So yeah, and guys, if you haven't bought a helmet yet, definitely check it out below. And uh, yeah, helmets, I feel like it's pretty cool to see now, like a lot of the other snowboard YouTubers as well, like pretty much, I think everybody's wearing helmets. So um, yeah, it's really not worth it, even though snowboarding is so much fun and, and everything, like you don't wanna risk like hurting your head doing it too. So yeah, um, big props to everyone setting a good example with the helmets. And yeah, if you haven't gotten a helmet yet, I would say that's the, probably the first thing you should buy is, is a snowboard helmet. All right. Tons of great questions on here, guys. Awesome. 60 likes. Thank you, guys. Uh, Jared Madison, what's your thoughts on the GNU Newzoid? It was a pre-order only. I ended up getting one, but haven't gotten to ride it yet. I've heard it's like an ASIM Orca. Wow. Uh, cool. Um, I haven't ridden it, but it looks like a really fun board. Um, I love that like crazy uh, ASIM shape it's got. So yeah, you have to let me know how it rides. It looks like a ton of fun. I'll, uh, actually, I think I have ridden it once and it felt, it felt like it, you feel like you're just riding a regular board, but it's got the crazy shape under your feet with the ASIM. So yeah, I like ASIM a lot. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool, but yeah, good choice, man. All right. So Jake says, best goggles under $150 Canadian. Uh, yeah, good question, man. I feel like, okay, what it, so I think the line miners by Oakley, they may, so right now, actually, uh, in the description, I think it's number two on the list. The Oakley line miners, I'm pretty sure they're on sale for less than $150 Canadian. But the catch is, I don't think that, you can buy them if you're in Canada. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Okay, so not the line miners. I think, yeah, that's a good question. So I've written the line miners. I've written the the anons are definitely over 150. Uh, maybe something like the Dr Dragon and FX. I would I would say Dragon. So maybe check out a pair of the Dr Dragon and FX too. I'm pretty sure they're under 150, and they come with two lenses. So. Yeah, look into, look into some Dragon NFX too. Uh, Me Hai says, uh, what should I be looking for when buying new bindings? Uh, so you should be looking for what type of riding you like to do and then match your binding to that. So if you like riding park, you wanna get a softer park binding. If you wanna ride like um, the groomers and carving, then maybe get like a, a mid flex binding. And if you wanna get into like uh, some more advanced pow riding, riding at high speeds and carving, then you wanna check out a stiffer binding. So the type of riding you do sort of dictate, dictates what type of binding you should get. But yeah, it's a really, really good question. Uh, Noah B wants to know best uh, shells. So best snowboard shells. So for me, I've been riding Volcom shells the last few years. But uh, before that, I was also riding uh, Dekine. I had a couple of Dekine shells. And uh, there's actually, there's a couple of Dekine jackets um, on Black Friday day, uh, for Black Friday deals on Evo. 
I think number nine on my list is uh, a bib, like a, a bib uh, Gore-Tex layer. So check that out. But also they had Dekine, the, the, the Dekine Vapor Jacket and also the Dekine Sawtooth were on sale, both shells, both Gore-Tex. And, um, and also, so yeah, the number one on my list there is the Burton AK jacket and pants. And even though it doesn't, the fit isn't right for me because I'm a bit too tall, I feel like for most people, the, the Burton AK is, is a solid, very solid shell, waterproof, and uh, like functional jacket and pants. All right, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This is uh, tons of people on here. Good little impromptu live chat. And Arash says, uh, what are your thoughts on the best crash pants? Uh, so I've been riding uh, Burton crash, yeah, crash shorts or impact shorts the last couple, couple of years. Um, it's actually another one that's on my list below. So definitely I would check out the, the Burton ones. They're just like, um, they're like a spandexy material. That's the short. And then they have this like, uh, I think it's called G-Force, but this hard sort of plastic where you need protection sort of on your tailbone, on your hips, um, just in a couple places. And so then if you fall, that material, material hardens and protects you. And since I've been wearing the uh, impact shorts, I haven't hurt in my tailbone or any of those areas. So definitely, I highly recommend checking out Impact Shorts. All right. Uh, Lewis Canal says, ride Warpig with setback stance. Would it survive Japow? Uh, it would, yeah. With a setback stance, the, the war pig does have a bit of a taper to it. It's directional. So set that stance back a bit and you're good. Definitely a good choice. And Philippe says, Union Contact Pro or Force to go with the Solomon Huck Knife. Thanks. Um, I would go with the Contact Pros because um, I like the, the ankle strap better on the contact pros. I find that the ankle strap is is on the contact pros like it has that curve so that it really helps to mold to your boot uh, better than the forces. I, I feel like the forces ankle strap is a little bit bulky in my opinion. So I'm a fan of the contact pros. And then plus you get the small disc on the contact pros. So making it making it so your board can flex a bit more natural with the Solomon Huck Knife. Yeah, definitely go for the Contact Pros. Uh, Kaz says, picked, up, picked myself up a new GNU Ladies' Choice 2020, 30% off here in Australia. Awesome, Kaz, yeah, good choice. I love the GNU Ladies' Boards, they're awesome. And Carlos says that he's found a pair of Oakley flight decks for 127.50 Canadian. That's a deal. That's a deal right there. Yeah, pick those up. That's a good one. Uh, Adam wants to know: Do you do you get heel slip on steep grades with those vans? So those vans. So yeah, my boots right here. They are the Vans Infuse. And no, the no heel slip, my, I, my heel wasn't lifting at all. Um, if anything, I feel like one criticism people have of Vans boots is that it, like it, your, your heel is almost too snug. So, but for me, like in the last three pairs of boots I've had have all been Vans. They've all had a uh, uh, comfortably snug heel and uh, with zero heel lift, so it's been good. And the cool thing with the Vans too is they have the uh, the boa on the tongue to really like suck the tongue in, which uh, helps to prevent the heel lift as well. And then you also have the strap at the top so that you can really like get the it tight around the the top of your ankle there. So I feel like yeah, no no heel lift, very comfortable. Uh, had them on my feet all day. Uh, the last like 20 minutes of the day, my feet were getting a bit achy in those brand new boots, but uh, yeah, overall they were great. Uh, awesome, cool, yeah, great questions, guys.
All right, so there's a really good question from Yeah Hut. Should I get medium or large bindings? I wear size 10 boots. So you should get medium bindings. So medium, I think the, the range for medium is from, I believe it's seven and a half to 10 and a half. I could be off by a half a size there, but I have size 10 boots and I've been riding medium bindings for m most of my life. Or it could be seven to 10 is medium actually. So I always recommend that you get the binding size where you, you don't wanna have bindings that are too big. So if you can squeeze into a smaller size binding, that's ideal. So if, you know, with the 10s, you could also go for large, but I would recommend medium. You just have that more like secure, snug fit in the binding. There's not a lot of like moving around happening. So definitely mediums with a size 10 boot. And Aaron has a size question. What size Orca for size seven and a half boots? Um, you're 5'6", 170 pounds. So what? So if you're 170 pounds, so 147 or 151, um, definitely go with the 151. You could even possibly go for the 153. Um, I don't know if the 153 is available, but I wouldn't, I think the 147 is probably too small for you. So 151 for sure, maybe 153. Uh, Liam Dart, how does the Orca compare to the Mind Expander? Uh, great question. So the Mind Expander by Jones, uh, very, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty different board. So if you can imagine the, the Orca, so the length of the board, it's got rocker in the center, rocker right in the center, and then camber zones under your feet. So giving you like, with those camber zones, it gives you a lot of like um, pop and energy out of that camber. And the rocker in the center kind of like lifts the rest of the board to help with the float. Where the mind expander has, so if this is the mind expander, uh, the back of the board is more camber so that you can get that like pop and control from, from sort of towards the back of the board. And then the front is like a big rocker section. So making it like more directional um, so that rocker section in the front helps it to uh, helps the nose to float out of the snow. So I think like two different feeling boards as you ride them. Um, yeah, very different. I, f I, f I found that on boards like the Mine Expander, I feel personally like it's a little bit less stable front to back. Where on the Orca, because it's got those camber zones, I feel very like stable on it, like riding my normal way or switch through powder. It kind of like feels about the same. Um, so yeah, I like, uh, they definitely feel different. The, they, they both have magnet traction, so both giving you that grip. But yeah, the, that profile makes them feel very different. All right, so a super chat from Zach. Thanks, man. Uh, Zach says, uh, Black Friday deal opinion, uh, 32 bib versus Gore-Tex pants. Um, it depends. It depends if you need Gore-Tex. So if you live somewhere where the conditions are wet, so kind of where we are in the West Coast, um, it's typically a bit, the snow is a bit wetter. So I feel like Gore-Tex is more of the priority. But if you live somewhere, for example, like Colorado, where it's very cold um, and you get that really light snow, then you're probably okay with just like regular 32 bibs. So yeah, that's what you gotta decide. Do you need that extra waterproofness or will you get away with, uh, without having it because you're someplace very cold? Um, Emily says, do you recommend Burton Speed Zone or BOA system for boots? Um, honestly, I feel like, I don't, I don't know. I, I prefer like the, the traditional laces. I know that's not an option a lot of the time, but I guess I would have to go with uh, Speed Zone. I think if I were to lean towards just having one or the other, I would I would go with Speed Speed Zone. I feel like Speed Zone for me has uh, just given me more uh, a more comfortable feeling in my in my boots. 
Where the boa, sometimes they, it's hard to get like them the right tightness. They can sometimes be over tight or not tight in the places that I like. So in my opinion, um, I've had better experiences with a pure speed zone boot over, over a pure boa boot. All right. Jake wants to know, I, I, I have to ride size 13 boots. What board is wide enough but can also rip the park? Um, yeah, you definitely need to get a wide board. I would, for size 13, I would look at some park boards that are wide and like look at the specs in terms of the, um, the numbers and make sure that the, the, they're wide enough. So I don't know exactly how wide it needs to be for th 13 boots, but uh, yeah, just pay attention to those, the numbers and the specs and get a park board that is like, uh, when you look at the specs, it's like one of the, one of the wider ones for a 13. I think that's uh, the best way to st stay safe on that. We got David watching from Toronto, Jack watching from Ohio. Thanks guys. Brent watching from Japan, who's also booked in a Seco trip. Amazing. All right. Yeah. Tons of great questions here, guys. Matt B wants to know, Kevin, what are your current goggles? Uh, so yeah, these guys right here, the, they are the Anon M4s. And I got them because I just feel like they are, they're wide enough and big enough for my head. So um, I wear like a large helmet. So like I have a, a fairly large head and face. So I need like a larger goggle. So the M4s are, are perfect. Um, I think that if you're say I have like a medium sized head, if you wear like a medium helmet, maybe you could check out something like the M3s. They're a little bit smaller. Uh, but in the, in the last few years, I've also worn Oakley goggles and I've had great experiences uh, mainly with the Oakley line miners as well. And you can get the line, the line miners if you have a larger face or you can get the line miner XM, which means extra medium if you have a smaller face. So um, yeah, those are a few options there, but yeah, big fan of the Oakley or sorry, the Anon M4s at the moment. All right, Johnny Snipe says, uh, have you seen the Orca uh, Times Evo collaboration? It's a beauty. No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to check it out. Uh, Camille, uh, I've answered this before, but I'll do it again. Which face mask do you recommend? Uh, Blackstrap. Yeah, check out the Blackstrap balaclavas. Um, it's linked below in the description in my, I've got my, the 10 best uh, Black Friday deals linked down, down below and the, uh, my, uh, black strap balaclava is linked down there. It's uh, yeah, really comfortable, uh, keeps you warm enough, and very functional too. And Biggie Bruce says, Rider ch Rider's Choice or Capita DOA? Nice, nice man. Um, if I were to pick between those boards right now for, for myself, uh, I would get the Rider's Choice. I've been, I've been loving the GNU boards recently and uh, I've been having a lot of fun on, the, on them. The magnet traction just holds so well across firm snow or ice. Um, I really like the the Camber Rocker Hybrid, the the C2 the C2 profile, and also the C3. Excuse me, guys. And uh, yeah, the Rider's Choice. I feel like the the top sheet this year looks pretty cool as well. So I would uh, I'd go for the Rider's Choice. Excuse me. Uh, we got. Uh, e watching from Germany, awesome. Uh, Alex Game is watching from the U.S. Lars wants to know if I've ever, ever been to Norway. Uh, never been. I uh, will have to go someday. Logan wants to know if we've ever boarded in California. Um, yeah, I've done a trip to to Mammoth. I've been so I've been to Mammoth and also to North Star in Tahoe. So uh, a couple spots there. Laura wants to know if I still have my Nitro POW board. Um, I do still have it, yeah. Um, the Nitro POW board, it's like, uh, the, I, I had a really great season on it. It, it is such, it's like a really, uh, a POW board that has like a massive nose, so it floats like super, super well. Um, especially like bringing it, it, bringing it to Japan, it felt, it, it 
it floated amazingly through the powder. Um, but the reason I changed to the, the Orca is just, I felt like there was more performance and energy coming out of the Orca. So kind of like two different style boards is again, so the, the Nitro Pow was great for just like really carving um, big turns through the powder, like just making big turns, big slashes, where the, the Orca is a bit more performance based where you can really, if you want to pop an ollie, you land a drop, um, it's a bit more um, in tune for doing stuff like that. All right. Uh, Tristan says, yo, Kevin just bought a Salmon board, Boa Salmon boots, and Burton custom bindings. <laughs> Good choice, man. Awesome. All right. Um, Shane Davis, I'm not sure if this is the same question, but asking what's a good waxing iron. Um, I think all waxing irons are about the same. They're, they're all good. I've actually, yeah, in my top 10 uh, Black Friday deals below, there's a Dekine waxing iron kit uh, listed. And I feel like any waxing iron you get is, is pretty standard. Awesome, guys. Uh, Leo says, I stumbled upon a, a pair of Burton Genesis bindings for $100. They have no significant wear except for a crack in one of the back supports. Uh, what is your opinion on beginner's first binding? Uh, for beginner's first binding, you probably don't need the Burton Genesis. They are like a really high-end, high-quality binding. But if you're getting them for only $100, like you might as well might as well pick them up. As long as that crack is just in a part of the binding that is for show and not for function. Um, but yeah, if, if you check them out and you think they're good, I, the Burton Genesis, they're very comfortable. The, the ankle strap is a very comfortable functional ankle strap. And uh, yeah, that's a solid binding for sure. Uh, make sure if you're a beginner that the binding is compatible with whatever board you have. So especially with Burton, um, they have two systems. They have like the traditional disc binding, but then they also have EST bindings, which have the screws on the outside. So make sure that the, like the, the binding that you get is compatible with the board that you have as well. <clears throat> All right, great questions, guys. Um, we got Annalise says, hi, Kevin, uh, Vlad and Anna watching from Romania. Love your reviews. We are looking for a board for her and we are stuck between Capita Space Metal Fantasy and Roxy XOXO Flower Banana. Thanks a lot. Uh, wow, yeah, a couple good boards there. Um, I would recommend probably the Roxy Flower Banana, just because I feel like it's uh, a bit more rocker friendly, which I, I guess it depends. I think the Roxy board is, is, is better for beginners. I think it also has some like mellow magnet traction and with the, with the, with the rocker, I think that's, that's the, probably the best uh, beginner type board. So yeah, I'd recommend the Roxy. Um, but the Capita Space Metal Fantasy is a nice one too. And, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd recommend the Roxy for sure. Yeah, th thank you guys for watching. All right. Uh, Lucas says, guys, if you like the channel, don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you, Lucas. Awesome, man. Uh, Kier1984 says, I'm going on my first trip and don't know how many pairs of snow pants to get. Any advice? Uh, you only need one pair of snow pants. How, <laughs> um, how many pairs? I would just say one. One pair is good for your first snowboard trip. That should be that should be all you need. All 
All right. Uh, the little echo wants to know if I know a pair of good goggles with good field of view. Uh, definitely, that's one of the most important things I look for is, is the field of view. And the two, my two standouts definitely are the Anon M4s and the Oakley Line Miners. I feel like for me, those have had the best field, field of view for sure. All right. All right, tons of great questions here, guys. Uh, Noah wants to know if we're gonna be snowboarding in Mount Baker this year. Uh, pr I hope so, yeah, it's about six hours from Whistler. So if you guys get some, some good snow, we're gonna make the drive and, and come down there for sure. And Wooter uh, wants to know, good, cheap, Bib pants. Uh, yeah, so I've actually listed below in my top 10 Black Friday deals, there is a pair of bib pants on there. The, they're the Dekine Stoker bib pants and uh, they're Gore-Tex and they're on sale. So I think you can't beat that. So check those bib pants out. Um, I'm sure there's some other cheaper ones on there too somewhere, but yeah, that was a pair that stood out to me. So the Dekine Stoker linked in the, in the description. Camille keeps asking what's my favorite face mask. It's the Blackstrap, Blackstrap face mask. Uh, and Brewer wants to know what's the biggest tip I can give to a snowboarder for their first time on the slopes. Definitely take it easy, go at your own pace, find an area that you can learn that's, uh, that's safe. Um, you don't need to go up to the top of the chairlift. You can just like hike a small slope and practice there, just like walking up, uh, sliding down and check out some of the beginner, like definitely watch the beginner snowboard playlist. Uh, there's lots of videos on there to help you get through your first day or two as of being, being a beginner. So yeah, check out those videos and uh, yeah, save yourself too. So don't put everything into day one, save some stuff for day two and day three. Uh, L Stacker says, I need to go to Colorado. Uh, definitely, man. <laughs> All right. We got a shout out from Scotland from Steve Zimmerman. Thanks, man. Um, Boom Bang Pow says, could you review junior stuff? Uh, it's difficult for me to review junior stuff, but uh, if, I, if I meet a young snowboard kid that wants to review junior stuff, and maybe they'll start their own uh, YouTube channel. But it's hard for me to do it, for sure. This is awesome. A lot of people on here talking to each other as well, answering questions. Thanks for helping out, guys. All right, oh wow, I gotta get caught up on these questions. All right, it's gonna scroll down a bit, get caught up guys. Thanks everyone for tons of great questions here, holy. All right, I'm scrolling down, I'm getting caught up. So Jonathan Kim with the super chat, thanks for the support Jonathan for being a sponsor of the channel. Uh, says, small or medium bindings for size eight men's boot. Uh, bindings I want only come in medium. I think medium is what you want too. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I think that small eights might be just too big for small bindings. So I think you need to go for mediums. So if it only comes in medium, then you're good. I'm pretty sure eight is a medium. All right, just going to and Drew Wisner with the super chat as well. Hey Kevin, what what are the signs you are overpowering a board versus just need to be more balanced? Uh, good question, man. I think it's. I feel like you. 
you can't really, I don't think like overpowering the board is a problem. I think that what, what could, could be a problem is, is the balance, so not having your weight over the proper area of the board, or you could overpower it by coming in with too much speed and trying to like say slow down or doing too sharp of a turn with too much speed. So um, what goes into that is a bit of planning. So a lot of times I see people, they're for example, like overpowering their heel turn because they're coming in with too much speed and they're trying to do a too short of a turn, which makes them slide their board slide out. And the way to fix that is to make sure that you're slowing yourself down enough on your toe turn. So kind of like evening out the toe and heel turn so that you're slowing yourself out the same on both turns and then you won't overpower one turn or the other. And then the other problem I see is people like slamming on the brakes too quickly and all into one edge. So if you slam on the brakes after a jump all onto your heels, you're probably going to slide out too much pressure on your board. So try to break that up with like a couple turns. So like, so I'll do 50% on that first turn and then 50% on the second turn. But yeah, good question, man. Uh, Rodney ba Black says uh, that he just picked up the GoPro 8. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I've got uh, the GoPro 8 as well. Just ordered some new batteries for it. Uh, but yeah, I think it, the picture quality and everything looks really good. The stability on it is, is great. Um, cool. So Adam, Bad Rider says, uh, Hey Kev, how many pairs of base layers do you have? When traveling, how many do you take and what's the rotation you tend to stick to? Yeah, Adam, good question, man. So I do, I had, I recently had three base layers, but the third pair really got worn down. So I threw out the third one. So now I have two and I'll probably pick up a third one uh, because yeah, when you go on trips, you can maybe get away with wearing the same base layer a couple days in a row. Uh, but if it kind of gets a bit funky, you definitely want to change them out. Um, and most places I stay too, because if I stay in an Airbnb, there'll be like washing machines. So I'll be able to wash my base layers throughout the trip. But if you're going someplace and you don't have a, a washer dryer and say if you're going on a week long trip, um, I would, yeah, try to bring two, maybe three base layers. Um, that's a good way to be safe with it. Um, if not, uh, and you can wash them, you know, you could get away with one base layer and just wash it every day or two. But uh, yeah, I usually bring minimum two base layers and just wash them every couple of days for sure. Um, Victor H, at what point should I consider buying my own stuff? Um, I think like once, once you're hooked into snowboarding and you know that it's something you want to do and you, you have the winter coming up and if you say like want to buy a season's pass or if you know you're going to be going on a regular basis like once or twice a week, um, definitely pick up your own stuff. It's, I think it's worth it in terms of like renting. You're definitely going to that money's going to go out every week if you're renting. So might as well invest in having stuff that you can use for, for years. So yeah, I would, if you're committed to a season's pass or going regularly, definitely look into uh, buying your own stuff. All right. Constantine says, I ride the Capita DOA with Union Atlases and Adidas Tactical ADV boots. Rode for two weeks last season and had really hard foot pain. Uh, will they break in more? Ah, oh, sorry to hear that, man. Um, I've never ridden Adidas boots before, so I don't know like what the break-in process is like for those. But yeah, I'm sorry to hear that you got foot pain, man. Maybe take them into a shop, um, get them heat molded possibly, try that out. Um, you can look at getting insoles for the boots as well. Try out some insoles. But if you're getting consistent foot pain, I would maybe first, yeah, try insoles, maybe get them heat molded. If that doesn't work, 
you may have to sell the Adidas and, and try a different boot. So like my strategy with my boots recently, the last, the last three pairs I've had, um, so they've all been Vans, uh, but what I've done is first I'll get recommendations from other people. I'm like talking to people, seeing like what boots have been comfortable, what boots have given people foot pain. Uh, but then when I try them on for myself, I'll just have my feet in the boots in the store for like, a half an hour to an hour just hanging out and seeing how they feel, if there's any weird pressure points, if there's anything like rubbing inside the boot. And for me, like I've, I've been lucky with my last three pairs, the Vans, they've all been very comfortable on my feet. And yeah, I was just in the store hanging out, making sure they felt good. So um, yeah, try that out with, uh, with Vans or a different pair, just put your feet in them and uh, try a couple pairs too. And as soon as you start feeling like weird pressure points or anything strange, that's like a good sign to take those boots off and try something different. All right. All right, lots of people on here. What's up guys? All right, we're at the one hour mark. Thanks for everyone for tuning in for the Black Friday live chat. I hope that you guys are finding this helpful. If you guys have found this video helpful, uh, give it a like. And if anyone's new to the channel here too, definitely subscribe to Snowboard Pro Camp and also uh, hit the bell beside the subscribe button because that gives you a notification every time I go live or upload a video, so. Um, all right, Noah wants to know, do you think the deep thinker is worth it? Uh, so this is like a, you could probably apply this to a lot of different boards. It's like some boards definitely start to get expensive. And I feel like it's almost like you want to match the price you pay for a board to your ability level. Like if you're a very new rider, it's good to spend as little money as possible because you're not gonna use a lot of the like more high tech features of the board. But as you start to improve and like you're getting to like intermediate to advanced, then if you get a more expensive board, you can start to use like those higher end features. And something like a POW board, for example, uh, there's a lot of like tech and like you know, uh, more unique designs going into POW boards. Um, so they typically are a bit more expensive, but if you're at that level, you're gonna feel those, um, the things that are in that board that make it more expensive. So they, it can definitely sometimes, but in other times too, it's like, if you're not into doing any fancy style riding, you just wanna go out and have fun with your friends, then you may just like to stick with a, you know, a more regular modest price board. Um, Wally says you should offer a package to go to Japan with you. Uh, yeah, definitely. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, we've been kind of like thinking of that idea. Like how can we ride with more people that watch the channel? Um, but yeah, the best way at the moment is just to like, if you see us, uh, just come up and say hello and we can, we can chat and maybe do a lap if, uh, that's a, if we're riding. Uh, but yeah, that's the best way to do it. It's a, it's a lot of work to organize like, dates and times and locations with big groups of people. Um, just in case, like if we don't make it or if there's any issues, it's a, it's, it's hard enough to run a YouTube channel, uh, let alone run a, like a whole travel business. So it's, uh, it's, so far it's better to just keep it casual and, and just meet up, say hello. All right. So Scheib says, any thoughts for Custom X Burton board? Uh, yeah, so the Burton Custom X, it's a very stiff, sort of like carving slash like big jump or half pipe snowboard. So it's a very aggressive, very stiff board. Um, I would say it's, it's one of the more advanced or most advanced boards in Burton. And I used to actually ride a Burton Custom X like back like 10 years ago or, or more. And I really don't know why I bought that board. It was just way too aggressive for me, way too stiff. But 
Yeah, it's if you if you're into that kind of stuff, then it's a good board. Carving, going fast, um, hitting big jumps, and riding half pipe, it's a good board. But other than that, I think it's it's too it's too stiff. All right, just gonna get caught up a little bit here, guys. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, Jaden Greer says, how do you feel about the crab grab punch mitts? Yeah, these guys right here. Um, yeah, I've been loving them so far. They're like, the the weight of the mitt is kind of like just like a mid, mid weight. So the, uh, yesterday the, the temperature was like minus 12 and my hands were totally warm. I feel like once it gets warmer, like, and they're not, they probably wouldn't be the best springtime mitt because they're a little bit heavy but they're not overly heavy and they're not super light. They're like right in the middle. So I feel like they're a good, good balanced uh, temperature mitt. So I, I like them a lot. And uh, somebody says, uh, just picked up a huck knife for 2020 season, thoughts? Yeah, it's great. The huck knife is a fun sort of like freestyle park snowboard. So it's like got enough pop in it and it's still soft enough to butter. So. A kind of good, good freestyle board. All right. Tons of questions on here. Thank you guys. Uh, so somebody's asking, how many times have you been snowboarding so far this month? Um, Honestly, this month hasn't been the most. So I was in Colorado about two weeks ago, snowboarding for a week. And since then, it's just been snowboarding here in Whistler. And that was just yesterday. So not that much, maybe eight days so far in November. So this has actually been my, my slowest month for snowboarding. Uh, part of that is because in Colorado, I, I had a fall and my shoulder was a little bit sore after that. So, uh, giving my shoulders some time to rest. But yeah, not the busiest, busiest, busiest month. But I have been snowboarding every, every month of the year, which is pretty wild thing to do. It feels kind of strange. I feel like I, I almost missed summer this year. All right, tons of great questions, trying to get caught up. Uh, Midwest Shred Vlogs with a super chat says, Hi, this is Jimmy. Uh, shout out to Dolfino and Marcelo. Uh, very cool, man. Thanks for tuning in, Jimmy. And yeah, shout out to Dolfino and Marcelo. That's awesome. All right, just gonna get caught up. All right, we're at we're back at the beginning or at the end or the most recent comments. Uh, Hype for real it says uh, gets, they're going snowboarding tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah, have a good day out there. And Luke wants to know Union Contacts or Forces. Um, I prefer the Contact Pros because it's got a better ankle strap. Kind of let's do like kind of like a, a speed round. Thoughts on the Ride Warpig? Very versatile board. You can kind of take it anywhere. And Cooper wants to know how to transition from sliding down the hill. Uh, to being better. <laughs> nice. Uh, work on those heel and toe slides equally. Once you can toe slide half the mountain, then you're ready to start trying your first turns. And when you go for your first turn, it's just about letting your board go. First, going to a very mellow area, letting your board go straight down the hill for a second before transitioning onto that new edge. And get somebody to help you for, through your first turns, like holding your hands for support. And uh, yeah, then you take it from there, then you get better. All right. All right, so Constantine again says, I have a DOA too, uh, is it good in park, but also pretty fast and has nice edge grip. For powder, uh, it is okay. Uh, when it gets deeper, you should put your stance back. Yeah, definitely. So the DOA, it's, uh doesn't have a taper on it. So in powder, you definitely have to put that stance all the way back. Um, sort of like a good all mountain 
freestyle board, but not like a, not a great powder board. All right. And we got uh, Ho Leung with the super chat. Thanks so much. Says, uh, hi, Kevin. Is the GNU headspace a good idea for my first board? I will be mainly riding all mountain, riding switch and doing some butters. If so, any difference between the 2019 and the 2020 edition? Uh, no, I would say there's no difference. I don't think there's any difference between the 2019 and 2020, uh, except for the, the top sheet. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty, you could, you could ride it as a beginner board because it's, uh, it's, it's a softer board. It's got C3 profile, which is a little bit more camber dominant, but it's not like a super, super aggressive camber board. Um, I would say check out this or go with something like the GNU Finest. Uh, the GNU Finest uh, or last year's GNU Space Case. Uh, it's, it's got more rocker in it, so a bit more forgiving for beginners. But you could definitely, you could do the Headspace as a beginner board because it's a mild camber. But uh, yeah, I would say either the Headspace or a more beginner friendly board would either be the 2019 Space Case or the 2020 GNU Finest. Very similar boards to this one, but just a bit more rocker to make it more forgiving and catch free. All right, so Heather Bruno says, what is this channel about? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, here on Snowboard Pro Camp, we do uh, snowboard vlogs. So if we're, if we're traveling or riding here in Whistler, we do like um, videos about our day. We also do gear reviews, uh, tutorials on pretty much everything to do with snowboarding, whether it's like beginner tutorials, border uh, progressing on your board or doing snowboard tricks. So yeah, a bit of everything to do with snowboarding on this channel. And we also do live chats like this where um, just talk about snowboarding and try to answer questions. All right. <clears throat> and uh, Pablo wants to know, how do you wash so your snowboard jacket and pants? So the, you can actually get like uh, snowboard like washing, uh, like outerwear solutions uh, so that there's like the one that I use, I think it's called, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe it's called Nick Wax, but the first bottle you use is for washing the jacket and pants. And then the second bottle that you put in is for waterproofing. So I feel like that is the best type system. So check that out. I think it's called Nick Wax. And yeah, first one, first bottle is for washing. Second bottle is waterproofing. And Max wants to know uh, thoughts on my, my thoughts on the Battalion Evil Twin. I think the Evil Twin is it's a really fun board for buttering. The 3BT and the nose and tail make it really easy and smooth, smooth to butter. Um, it does take a little bit of getting to get to you get to get used to the 3BT. So you, you have like basically you have less uh, edges because of the way the edges lift away from the snow. So you, there's kind of like a trade-off there. The board is less catchy because of the board of the edges rising away, but at the same time, you have a little bit less control. So it does take some time to get used to, but uh, it's a, a really fun freestyle park board for sure. All right. Uh, and Engen asks, hi Kev, how is the Orca on Piste, uh, in your opinion? Yeah, it's, it's really fun. So yesterday here in Whistler, it was like an icy hard pack day and was just riding it. So all on the groomers, all on Piste and, uh, sorry, just one sec. <coughs> oh, bless me. Um, yeah, it rode really well on the groomed runs. Yeah, really good board. All right, let's do, uh, let's do a couple more questions here. Oh, David Jones. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, David. Were you just waiting for me to sneeze to get in a comment there? <laughs> 
Uh, so Jacob says, trying to choose between the T-Rise Pro and the Orca, seeing how you've ridden both, uh, are there any differences except for the shape and setback stance? Um, there is a difference. I found that with the Orca, where the, the camber zone is under your back foot, it's much easier for, for me. I found it much easier for ollieing. For some reason on the T-Rise Pro, I found that ollieing was a little bit more tricky. And I don't know why, because it looks like the same type of profile. But uh, with the Orca, I found like getting a pop or an ollie was much easier with the Orca. Um, the Orca floats better in powder because it's got more taper and a shorter tail. Uh, the T-Rise Pro is probably better in the park. So if you wanted a board that was like all mountain and you could take in the park, the T-Rise Pro is more leaning that way. So more freestyle friendly, where the Orca is more like uh, fast riding, carving, powder friendly. So yeah, those are a couple good choices there. And David was waiting for me to sneeze just to get a comment in. Uh, I think I, I think I heard somebody blow some, uh, some pollen into the room. I think, uh, David's planted somebody in Whistler to troll me. <laughs> nice man. Uh, David, I hope, uh, man, I can't wait to see you in Japan and David, if you ever come to Whistler, I just moved into a new apartment and I've got a room for free. So if you ever need a place to stay in Whistler, let me know. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be seeing you in Japan. I just booked my flight today, so we'll see you soon, man. Uh, Trev says, Kevin, I'm getting a DOA and I have some flow bindings for my, for my previous board. I'm wondering if I should get a new set, up, set of bindings to replace the flows or get a new set of boots. Uh, thoughts? Ah, uh, that's tough. I don't know. I don't know like how much do you like your flows? Um, if they are a softer binding, you may want to get something a bit of a mid flex for the DOA, something uh, like maybe like the Union Stratas, something that's more of like a mid flex, but it depends if your flows are mid flex and you like them, maybe you want to keep them. But, uh, and boot wise, I don't, again, I don't know what boots you have now, but if you're upgrading your board and you're excited about the board, if you have any doubts about the boots or bindings, it could be time to replace, yeah. All right. It's gonna get caught up again. Uh, so CTA Hall, what time will you be in Japan? I'll be in Japan the last two weeks of January. So from like the 15th until the 31st. And Bradley Hankis uh, wants to know Union Atlas versus Now Drive. Uh, good question. Um, to be honest, right now, I feel like they're about the same. It's hard to tell, like stiffness wise, they feel the same. Uh, maybe the now drive may be slightly stiffer. But uh, yeah, I think the toe cap on the now drive is more comfortable. I think I can confidently say that the, the toe cap on the now drive is more comfortable. I don't know which one has the better ankle strap. I'll have to feel it out a little bit more for you and get back to you on that one. But both good choices, both good like powder, all mountain carving type bindings for sure. And Jacob wants to know, does magnet traction make a big difference on a board? Yes, magnet track. Yeah, magnet traction makes a huge difference. It's uh, just like allows you to grip the snow and ice like so, so much better. There's like, yeah, it's, it's huge. All right. Elliot, Elliot club says, uh, Hey Kevin, love the videos. Do you have any tips for board sliding? Uh, definitely. So for board slides, you want to first find an easy feature like a box, uh, go on straight 50, 50. And once you're comfortable, start to like go on straight 50-50 and then twist your board sideways a little bit. And each time you do it, try to twist your board a little bit more until you progress to the point where you can just hop on and be completely sideways. And the most common thing is people sliding back on your heel. So what you can do 
is you wanna keep your board completely flat. And to do that, take your front hand and reach down towards the box, and that'll help to keep your weight forward. And when you're doing it too, make sure you wear a helmet and the impact shorts will help with your tailbone uh, when you do possibly slide out onto your, onto your, onto your back. Um, cool. Awesome guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, just a reminder to guys, I've linked my top 10, uh, Black Friday deals in the description. If you want to check that out. Um, I think there's, there's some Oakley goggles down there. There are like lots of accessories, the, the balaclava that I wear and also some, some Gore-Tex outerwear. So I try to find the best combination of stuff as my top Black Friday deal. So those are all listed in the description if you want to check them out. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for jumping on to this Black Friday live chat with me. Uh, it's been fun just talking about snowboard gear with you guys. Uh, I wish I could do it um, longer, but actually I need to uh, just, I got some, I got to, I actually got to blow my nose after sneezing like that. So I got to, <laughs> I got to head out guys, but uh, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope wherever you are, you're having, um, the snow is uh, falling and your local resorts are opening up and yeah, good luck out there guys putting together your 2020 snowboard gear list. And if you still have any questions that I haven't gotten to, you can leave them in the comments of, of any video and I'll definitely, uh, I try to get to every question on the channel. So yeah, thank you guys uh, so much for tuning in and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one soon. Have a good weekend guys, later.